heard. We're grateful to be in the house of God one more time. Another day God has blessed us. And for that, we are rejoicing. And we are sure enough, y'all, we are sure enough exceedingly glad. How many of y'all glad to be in the number one more time? One more time. One more time. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And for that, we are grateful and we are glad. Again, we thank God for each of you. Do we, do we have any first-time visitors? You've never been in worship with us? But you pressed your way today? Any first-time worshipers with us today? Everybody's been here before? Well, it's just good to be alive then. Good to have this opportunity to share. Listen, I've sent you a number of uh, opportunities for scholarships. Uh, I've sent one today just for those who are thinking about going to Fort Valley. But there are a number of uh, broadband scholarship opportunities uh, that I hope that you would take advantage of, um, pass it on to your, your children, your grandchildren, your nephews, your nieces, to make sure that they have what they need uh, because they have every opportunity to succeed. And that's what we want to do as a church family. We want to give them every opportunity to succeed. Amen? So for that, we are, we are grateful to God. Happy St. Patrick's Day, whatever that is. Say Happy St. Patrick's Day. I see some of y'all with the green on and Somebody said they got to pinch you if you don't have it on. So if you got a dollar in your pocket, you got some green on you. So you, <laughs> so you won't get pinched today. Amen. 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 Um, announcement, of, we got Nicole. Where's Nicole? Stand, Nicole. Nicole Clark. There she is right there up front. Nicole's little baby is, is one year old. Give, give the baby a, a birthday blessing. I'm going to have a birthday on the 23rd. Um, 12 to 3 here at the church, and we are grateful to God. Uh, but I also wanted to say that she is on her way uh, to joining the Navy. Amen. She's going to be a, a Navy. What do they call them? Navy? Seaman. 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 All right. A seaman. All right. We're ready. We're, God bless you, and we're thankful to God for you. Also next to her, uh, Brother Pascal. Brother Pascal, in two months, Wave, wave, wave your hand. He's on his way to the army. Y'all thank God for him. And he's a Paschal. And I told him his, his mom was a Paschal. And all y'all related to Paschal's got Paschal blood. Wave your hand. I want him to see it. These are your cousins and uncles and aunts. So if you need a little money, talk to them. They got you. These, these are your kinfolk. And they're going to they're gonna bless you. All right? Women's demonstration next Sunday, um, you're, you're to wear uh, shades of pink and denim and diamond and pearls and all of that. Some of you already have some of that on already today, um, but um, Minister Marlo Leatherwood will be uh, the speaker on next week and some uh, guest singer, psalmist, uh, Jocelyn uh, McAllister will be here. Is that right? Is that, is that do right, Jocelyn? Jocelyn, Jocelyn, I said Jocelyn. Jocelyn will be here to sing and share, and uh, we're grateful to God for that. Now, we were today were supposed to have our meditation demonstration, um, but um, Sister Gardner had uh, some issues in her family with death, and so she asked that we would postpone that to next Sunday after worship, and so I would that you would um, be ready for that after worship on next week as well. So a lot's going on and we just need you to stay focused, continue to be on your remind. Everybody don't have remind, but you have it and so share it with those who don't have technology or don't get into all of that so that everybody will be on the same sheet of music. Amen. Amen. Didn't, didn't Dr. Neal do a great job last week? I watched her in worship. Great. We thank God for him and his ministry and God continue to bless him and thank God for you. The First Mount Carmel Baptist Church family. Amen. I, I want to I wanna go ahead and do the word, and then I want to turn these men loose and let them bless us, and then I'll be ready to unpack this word, all right? So we'll do that you would stand right where you are as we look at Psalm 100. Psalm 100, all right? I want to do it responsibly. I want you all to be involved in this, and we'll all read verse number five together. Now I want you to know this is a joyous song. So you can't do this with sadness. You got you to gotta wake up. You got to get it, all right? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Yes. That's right. Know ye that the Lord is good. He's good and God. 
It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. My, my. Be thankful to him. Together. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Come on, give God a hand of praise as you take your seat. Amen. All right, all right. We're grateful. These men are ready, and we're ready to hear y'all just bless us here on today. Some of the best male singers on this side of the Mississippi River. Amen. Let your say amen. amen. All right. Good morning, church. The psalm said, come into the presence of the Lord with singing. So we're going to ask you guys to help sing along with us as we praise the Lord this morning. Jesus, he's coming again. It may be he'll come in the morning, it may be night or noon, I don't know just when it may come, I'm trying to get my work all done, but I know, I know. he's coming, he's coming. yes he is, one more thing you see, with Jesus got ready, stepped on a cloud, and he went away. He told, told his people, I want you to watch and pray. I'm going away, but I won't leave you alone. Got something to send to you, but I must be gone. Said, I know, he's coming. Yes, he is. One more thing you see. When Jesus, he got ready, he stepped on a cloud, and he went away. He told, told his people, I want you to watch and pray. I'm going away, but I won't leave you alone. Something to send to you, but I must be gone. Said I know, I know. He's, coming. he's coming, he's coming back again. Coming. If y'all don't mind, help me tell him he's coming, he's coming. Again. again. He's coming, he's coming. Again. again. I know he is, he's I know he is, again. just like he said. He's coming back. Again. Now somebody said when he comes, again. he'll be riding a great horse. Again. See somebody else say when he comes, again. he'll be riding out on a cloud. Again. See, I don't know just how he may come. Again. I'm just trying to have my work done. Somebody else say when he comes, gonna step one foot out on the land. He's gonna step one foot out on the sea, and he's gonna call, call on time to eternity. If you ain't ready, it's gonna be too late. For you to get ready, cause he's sure so coming, just like he said, he's coming again, he's coming again, he's coming again, coming again, coming again, coming again, and I know he's coming, he's coming back again. y'all. Oh, 
how y'all doing this morning? Ain't God good? I know he's good. The reason I know he's good, he woke me up early in the morning. Y'all don't mind. Y'all come on and go with us. Just listen.
God bless you. Amen. Let me see. Let the will of the Lord be done. I like, I like, I like your energy today, y'all. Amen. You singing like you know the Lord is good and amen and his mercy endure forever. And I really love seeing y'all when y'all get into it and, and help them when they're, with, they're singing. So we're grateful to God for that. Good to see you. Sister Debbie Little back there in the back. God bless you. Good to see you in the house on the day. Been praying for you. And we're happy to see you again on this Sunday. Now that's some, some fruit in the back for you after you uh, leave. Today, as you dismiss going to the fellowship hall, Brother James keeps us in that ministry. He and Brother Willie and uh, Sister Lucille, who had a birthday. Happy birthday to you, Sister Lucille. She's listening. And uh, she helps out with the food ministry as well. And so uh, we're grateful to God for that ministry. It has done great work in our area. And for that, we are, we are certainly grateful and glad. Now, the young ladies, the young, the young children we prayed for at the beginning of the year lost their mom. Um, just lost their grandmother, and um, that's that's the connection with the Gardner family, and that's why they're not with us this morning. But we want to. Oh, you all are here. All right, some of y'all are here. Amen. Uh, the, the matriarch is here, um, but we want to pray uh, for that family. Continue to keep that family in prayer. Good to see you all here, but certainly do that. See, that's that's what I mean by um, uh, ministry outside of. Um, the four walls of the church and people reaching out to people and touching lives um, that's being done and they don't they don't like fanfare and all of that but just want you to pray keep them in your personal and private prayers as well amen god be the glory for the great things that he has done is doing and shall do i guess we get a little report from our pages uh, pages they went up to uh, Atlanta on this week and served as page uh, for the Senate for the state of Georgia on, on this week and um, some of them have something to say to you all to say thank you after the word today um, but I'm grateful to God uh, for Sister Mika and these young people who took time um, to do a civic duty amen as we share because we want to be well rounded spiritual as well as civic right as a part of what we do as church family let's pray god as we get into this word today we pray god that you would again open us up make us ready make us like ground getting ready for seed we want to be good soil and uh, we want you to speak to our minds and our hearts father we love you we honor you and we bless your name speak for your children are ready to listen it's in the bountiful name of he who said if i be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Psalm 100, we read, we read together, and we read out of the King James. I want to, uh, as I begin today this lesson, I want to uh, read it out of the uh, message translation. On your feet now, applaud God, it says, bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Look what he said. Know this, God is good. And God, God, God who made us, we didn't make him. We're his people. We're his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password. Thank you. My, my, my. Make yourselves at home talking praise. Thank him. Worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal, always and forever. God's word for God's people. And I want to use a subject, this to thought this morning. Know ye that the Lord is good. Wow. Know ye that the Lord is good. And beloved, in this time in which we're living, the day and age in which we're living, all that's going on in our life, all that's going on in the political realm, all that's going on in the world, we need to be reminded, in spite of it all, God is good. God is good. Not only that, but as, as David writes, David really wants us to know and understand that, that, that the church, the, the, in the Hebrew, the, ecclesi, the called out community, this is what the church is. The church is not, 
6269. It's not the building. Uh, this is where the church gathers. This is where we, we gather together. But, but, but here's the thing. It, it, David, when he writes, David is writing to a people who needed to be reminded that God, in spite of what they were going through, in spite of their challenges, that God is good. God, God is good. Now, he, he said, don't forsake the assembling. Come on together. And now in this day and age, we come together. We come together a little differently. So, some are coming together, but, but they're on the road right now. Some are coming together, but they're at their, at their homes right now. Some are at work, and they take a little break, and they come together. They're still worshiping. They didn't come into a building, but we came together unified for the purpose of praising our God. And one thing pandemic taught us was that, you know, God is not resonated based upon a brick and a mortar. That, and the church, Jesus told us this 2,000 years ago, the church is wherever the people of God gather. <laughs> wherever we are on your job, that becomes your place of praise. That becomes your place of worship because why? One reason, because God is good. I like what Eugene Peterson says in the message translation. He said that the password with God is thank you. Because it's something about our God and really about you too. You appreciate, watch this, when folk appreciate what you have done. Am I right? You ever done something to somebody and they didn't have sense enough to say thank you? It, it, it don't cost you nothing to say thank you. Some folk you do things for and they act like you ought to be glad you did it for them. He said, the password is, thank, thank you. Well, we, we come together. We come hear the word. We come together. We fellowship together. It's good to see the saints of God together. We, we, come, we come to church today a little different than we did back in the old days. Back in the old days, the old church, back in, oh God, in the 40s. Back in those days, some of you were, were there. You didn't have a whole lot of clothes. You had what they called church meeting clothes yeah them them the clothes that you only some of y'all younger ones are shaking your head so yeah no, no, you, you didn't wear them clothes to school Th those were your church <laughs> and when you got home you put there you go y'all came up in the same area yeah you, you pulled off them church going clothes you, you had what well, you had you had back in the day you had a little church candy yeah, grandma that mama big mama had had peppermint i don't know what the deal was with peppermint but peppermint had had a little peppermint and if you would get get a little rowdy before they whip you behind they give you peppermint Ho hope that that'll calm you down didn't know that sugar was gonna make you rough <laughs> But but you had you had back in the day they had a little little candy you had your you had your Bible toting their Bibles to to church that back back in the back in the old day you had a handkerchief just in case a tear might fall you had your your handkerchief you know the butterscotch candy you had all you had nabs you old folk know what nabs are you had. Crackers in case your sugar got a little low. Had a little snack. Uh, well, nowadays, you come a little different. Got cell phones. Got iPads now. They charge you for your snacks now over there. They got, got some snacks for you, but you're going to pay a little something, and then you can get your nab and bring them back in church and eat your nab just in case your sugar get a little no. But, but that's all physical stuff. That's all physical stuff. But now... That, that's temporal, but, but here in the text, David ain't talking about none of that. De David is talking about your spiritual. What, what do you bring uh, to worship your God, things that, that gets God's attention, uh, that touch the very heart of God? David said, when you get ready to come to church, you need to have the right spirit. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he's good. You ought to have the right spirit. The same David that said, I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. I, I just imagine, back in the day, I wasn't there, but I just imagine, Dr. Neal, that when David went to church, that was a happy occasion. He didn't go there, he didn't go there dragging, but, but, but he, it was a happy occasion occasion. It was something that he looked forward to. I guess some of y'all like that because they tell me out there uh, in the parking lot, some of y'all come in there speeding, doing 30 miles. Now I get y'all glad to get in the house. 
They're running late. They're... <laughs> well, y'all slow it down in the parking lot now. But y'all get to some of them, some of them got to go to the bathroom. Just be real about that thing. And they're trying to get in there and trying to park. And trying to... But, but, but gladness, <laughs> because it's that time again. We come together, we worship God collectively, we sing God's songs of Zion. He says in the text, you ought, to, you ought to shout for joy. If you think, when you think about what God has done for you, and you think about how God has kept you and how God has provided for you, it ought not take much for you to shout for joy. Yeah, let me tell you a miracle that, that you see every time. You don't mind me sharing with Brother Samuels when he sings, you don't know he has severe back problems. Severe back pain. He don't look like it. The way he kicked that leg. And, <laughs> hey, he, don't, he don't look like it. But I asked him one day, we were going outside, we was leaving out. I said, man, how, how often do you have the pain? He said, every time you see me, I'm dealing with the pain. But, but what does he do? He pressed through the pain. So, some of y'all do that too, don't you? Press through the pain. You don't, you don't know what the folks sitting next to you are going through. You, you don't know what the folks sitting in front of you are going through. They're pressing through their pain. They, they could have worshipped at home. But they pressed their way. So when they come to church, that's a, that's a serious time. And, and they're joyous. David said you ought to have some joy. Yeah, when you worship, when you worship and you serve the Lord. Also, you know, he used another word in the text, gladness. Glad for his goodness. Glad for his grace, glad for his mercy, glad because you're here. I ain't got nothing to be glad about. You ought to be glad that you are here because you know it could have been another way. You sing song, so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. <laughs> sing another song. I don't know about men saying this. Glad, glad I, glad. I got Jesus. We sing that, no. Down in my soul. Y'all heard that before? That's a good old quartet song. Glad I got you. And they be back. Oh, in my soul. Don't pick me up. Glad I got Jesus down in my soul. Ooh. Glad I got Jesus down. Glad I got you know, Jesus in my soul. Oh, glad I got a friend down. Lord have mercy. Glad I got a friend down. Oh, God. Well, glad I got Jesus down in my. Uh, glad G. Then that quartet, they go. They go. Yeah, yeah. Glad I got. Glad I got. I got Jesus. I got Jesus, I got Jesus, anybody got Jesus, I got Jesus, anybody got Jesus, me a friend, friend, lawyer, got Jesus, I said I got Jesus, come on, come on Dawson. Woo! That was all right. I don't even want to do no more now, really. I could have, we could have rolled that one right on home. But, but see that? See how you did that? I got you. I'm glad. I, I, this, this is my thing. You ought not be more excited at wrestling than you are at church. <laughs> I ain't never been to wrestling. And they were sad about being there. You ought not be more happy at the baseball game than you are in worship. You, you ought to be glad. There ain't nothing wrong with the baseball and the football. You know, I'm not that much baseball, I'm more football, but, but I, and I'm glad about my team and all, all that. And we just have fun with that. But I am not more glad at the Super Bowl. They tell me at the Super Bowl, Tim, there are people who paid $2,000, $3,000 for a seat. Huh? $10,000. Ooh. $10,000. They got to give me a ball and everything. Signed by all the ball players. $10,000. 
You see what I'm saying? And Lord just asked you for a tithe. $10,000 for a ball game that they don't even play. They just out there. And we, we argue at the TV. I mean, we're so glad about our team. We argue at the TV we, like they can hear us. I know not our church, but there are folk who be cussing. Not us, because nobody in this church cuss. Somebody asked me, y'all, put a pen right there. Somebody asked me, uh, they, they put me to the side and said, Reverend, do you really believe that none of Mount Carmel members cuss? I ain't gonna say who it was. I said, I said, no, I just be playing. Cause I know you. <laughs> glad, glad. He said, glad. Glad about word. That's right, brother Ford. Just keep it real. Glad about worship. Glad about praising God. And and he says in the text, it ought to move you to sing it. Do you see what singing does? Singing is powerful. I, uh, I, um, I do this thing. It's my personal ministry. I don't know about nobody with it. I do a little karaoke in the nursing home sometimes. Um, so Tasha, I'll go and I'll, I'll sing. And, and this, this one particular place I was, this is just the power of music. There was a, a guy in there sitting almost like he was dead in his chair. And I started... Uh, this song, New York, New York, start spreading the news. Dum, do, 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 do. I'm leaving today. Dum, do. And this man got up out his chair and act like he had his wife dancing with him. Sent chills. Workers were sitting there filming. They couldn't believe it. The song went off. He went back to his seat. Slum right now. Music is powerful. Now, ain't nobody had to tell us that. We know that. Because we, we know about songs and music. And I, I'm being clear with you. I like all genres of music that I can understand. Some of it I can't understand. The, the beats sound all right, but when they start talking, God knows I don't know what they say. But song that I, that I understand, the song, and I understand the words to it, particularly songs of grace, these songs of Zion that we sing. I tell you, I can sing them in my car all by myself. This is king. I can, I can sing it in my house with nobody there, and I sing my song. Deacon Millis, I can sing my song in my backyard all by myself. And there's some in here, you, you're shaking your head, and I, I ask you to sing or something in front. You'd never do it. Oh, Reverend, I can't do it. But in your house, in your car, you can sing your song. Because ain't nobody, nobody there going to critique you. Tell me why you did Oh, you miss a note, or that ain't the words. You ought to hear him tell me that when I miss them words sometimes. And I know I do. Reverend, you know that ain't the song. That ain't how it go. It's how it went, though. It ain't about how it go. How it went. It went, though, see? Yeah. <laughs> because, because the song is in my, my heart. Y'all thank God for these musicians because they go with me and they, they don't know where I'm going. And, and, and sometimes he'll text me afterwards and say, I don't know what that was. It works. God knows that ain't no song, Reverend. That ain't the way. That, but, but it works. Because if, if you're talented and you're gifted and you got... This bass and this, the, all the drums and all of this, piano, man, they make stuff just sound good, don't they? And that's why sometimes in the choir, watch it, I'm just telling a, a secret in the choir. Sometimes, if you watch closer, some of them, they, they lips just moving, but it ain't nothing coming out. They don't forgot the song, but they know how to clap. They know how to show joy. They know how, and this this is the thing, y'all. This is the thing I'm moving on. You, you ought to at least know how to smile. Yeah, smiling, smiling will help your, your situation. Sometimes, you know, in our bringing forth gladness, David said, David said, I, I bring forth this gladness. I bring forth this joy all day and all night. Grandma said, the angels keep watching over me. These are songs of expression and songs of experience, songs, again, of praise. Because what happens is, y'all, life happens. 
And when God has brought you through some stuff, it'll cause you to have a song in your heart. Lord, have mercy. Then you're singing because of your experience. I'm singing. I'm singing to the shepherd. I'm the sheep in his pasture. He's your God. But David, David, this same David said, Lord, is my shepherd. I shall not want. David, thank you for that. But David, he ain't just your God. He's my God too. And David said, well, I'm not trying to be selfish. You need to declare that for yourself. The Lord is my shepherd. That's why I'm glad. So, so, I, so I give God this way. I give him, David said, I give him my best because I love him. When you come to church, you ought to have, you ought to bring, watch it, the right attitude. You ought to bring a shouting spirit. You ought to bring gladness. You ought to bring some joy. Listen, listen, what about joy? You, you, the, the Bible said the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You, you hook up with him and he give you strength. He give, he'll boost you. He'll lift your spirit. I remember when I was in the hospital, I've been in the hospital one time. I spent there two, two nights in the hospital and, and in my spirit I was singing songs. I was singing songs. I, I, I didn't want to be there, but I knew I needed to be there. Because I knew I was sick. Y'all knew I was sick. So I, I was there. I was in the right place. But, but they couldn't stop the joy that was in my heart. I had a joy in my heart. I, I, I relinquished y'all. I, I, I had a situation where I couldn't do nothing for myself. So I had to listen to those professionals who was around me. But, but they didn't know all the time I had a song in my heart. Celebration of life with Brother, brother uh, Deacon Tut yesterday. Some of y'all were there, um, and, and you know, he said, they said that he went, he's up in uh, Maryland, uh, up, up north, and got a surgery that uh, average people don't get. So usually they say they're always generals or colonels or movie stars get this particular heart surgery, and, and they have Deacon Tut from Appling, Georgia, in there, Willie Tut. And he said, Willie said, uh, said, the nurse kept asking, who are you? He said, I'm Willie Tut. I'm Apple and George. But then she said, but then she kept on. She just wasn't even alone. But, but what'd you do? Who, who are you? He said, but I'm just, I'm Willie Tut from Apple and George. He said, she just wouldn't leave that thing alone. She asked him, as the old folks said, one more again. She said, what, 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 why are you able to do this? Who are you, sir? And he got tired of that. He said, well, I am a child of God. That's all he needed. I am a child of God. My, my buddy up in Flint always said, just, my preacher said, just, just be the Lord's preacher. Just, just be the child of God. God. God will open doors for you. God, God will give you people that will help you along the way. Just be the child of God. You ain't got to brag. You ain't got to boast. Just be who you are. And, that, this way, and that will give you joy. See, I, I, know, I know that everything around here is temporary. It's temporary. We, here, we temporary. 100 years from now, none of us will be here. Except little Clark, she, the little baby, will be 101. She be, live like Miss Ludell. She'll be 101. But 100 years from now, most of us will not be here. Will y'all agree with that? Y'all ain't scared of that, right? 100 years ago, 100 years ago, there are people who wanted to be here, but they, they're not here. We're standing on there. Because why? They are they were temporary. You are temporary. Your car, temporary. Your house, temporary. Your clothes, temporary. Your jewelry. You don't take that with you. I mean, if the family wise, they, they take that last little, you know, when they about to put, put the coffin down, that last, hold up. Okay, now I'll go ahead. Because it's all temporary. Well, here's the good thing. The relationship that I made with God, when I, when I hook up with the Holy One, that ain't temporary. That's the only thing that goes beyond the grave. Is your relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why the songwriter said, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that good and perfect comes from you. Which also lets me know, that, that with him, not only is he the right person, the Lord, but, but he's also got the right power. 
Yeah. Ever, you ever been hooked up with the wrong somebody? Hmm. So I said, Jesus. <laughs> That's a bad thing to be hooked up to the wrong somebody. Now, now listen, if you got spiritual discernment, the Lord will let you know quickly when you done fooled around and messed around and hooked up with the wrong somebody. You got to know when to give folk they walking papers. Say, listen, I, look, this thing ain't working out. I don't like you. You don't like me. And this thing ain't working out. And the Lord had already clarified in my mind and my spirit that you ain't the one. But baby, no, ain't no but baby. You better call Tyrone. <laughs> Tyrone ain't here today. Tim, come get your stuff. Because it, you got to go. See, power. God, that's power. God gives you the power to discern. First of all, it shouldn't be there unless, unless you're married to him. Let me put that in parentheses. All right. I think I ought to say that. All right. Power. Say power. Power. No other power like his power. Atomic power don't touch his power. He's got all power. Power that supersedes anything. Outlasts anybody. Overwhelms anybody. Power that'll catch you by surprise sometimes. He's, he's the right person. He has the right power. All, all, all I can show sure enough shout about y'all because um, of who he is, the power he has. He hooks up with me. Not only does he have power, but get this, y'all. I'm about ready to land the plane. Guess, guess, he, he not only has power, but, but with his power, he makes promises to his people. The promises come from his word. And let me tell you something, y'all. He's a promise keeper. He can't lie. So if God said it, you just need to stand on it. Yeah, we sang that song back in the day at first Africa. Standing on the promises of God. Yeah, you got to stand on his promises. His promises are, are, are fruitful and faithful. His promises are true. His promises are real. His promises are reliable. And he keeps us in his promise. He promised that he'd never leave us or forsake us. That's a promise. He got, he got hundreds of promises in the Word, but let me just give you a few and then I'll go. Let, just, just, just a few out of the book of, just one out of the book of Isaiah. He promises to give us power, watch this, to help the broken, to give good news to the poor, to set the captives free. That's what he says in Isaiah. He promised us that through fasting and praying that we could loose the chains of injustice. That's what's wrong with our world, y'all. It ain't, about it ain't about political power. It's about the people of God doing what we need to do. Fasting and praying. And he said he will loose the chains of injustice and break the yokes if we, the people of God, would fast and pray. That's on us, y'all. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Here's a promise. Here's a promise. Here's a promise. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you away. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. This is the promise that comes from the almighty God. And I come to tell you that his promises are great today. You can stand in 2024 on the promises of the almighty God. I dare you, Mount Carmel, don't be scared. To stand on his promises. Sometimes feel like you're not going to make it. But the devil is a liar. I declare there's some who are sitting here right now. That folks said you wasn't going to make it. But look at you right now. God has brought you through. And if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side. You got to ask yourself where would I be? So another songwriter said Lord I thank you for my journey Lord you brought me from a mighty long way you brought me over hills and mountains you brought me through deep valleys so Lord I thank you for my journey Isaiah 41 13 says I am the Lord your God 
who takes hold of your right hand says with you can go without fear because I will be with you in our study we've been learning about what he says in the Old Testament when he talks about the right hand I told you the right hand signifies power God said I'll hold you in my right hand meaning God said I got power all over you that's why when you walk out these doors don't walk out with your head down but the Bible said lift up your head oh ye gates be lifted up you everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory I hear the word said the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle the Lord who holds my hand and God's my footstep is there anybody here that can say yeah I know the Lord I know he's good I've tried him for myself ain't he all right I said ain't he all right say yeah say yeah yeah know ye know ye know ye that the Lord is good and his mercy whoo, endures throughout all generations. I'm finished. Listen, when you go to work tomorrow, there are going to be some folk in there with their heads down. Some folk in there that got negative attitudes. But you're going to walk in there with joy in your heart. And then somebody facetiously going to ask you, why are you smiling? Why are you so happy? You tell him because the preacher told us out of Psalm 100. Know ye that the Lord is good. Why? Well, why you say he good? Well, he woke me up this morning. He good. Started me on my way. He's good. Gave me food and drink. He's good. I got up this morning and I didn't try to put the shoes on my head. He's good. Is he good? I mean, don't fool me now. Is he good to you? Have you ever tried my Jesus? If you've never tried him, I recommend him to you today. Amen. I want to open the doors of the church. Ooh, there may be somebody here today that needs to connect with this one who got power. This one who makes promises. This one who gives us joy. That you'll be just like David. David said, I could say it because I got relationship with him. And you can say it because you got relationship with him. You can say it because you know what God has brought you through. Well, let me just check the house. Anybody here God brought you through some stuff? That folk didn't think you were going to make it through. But by the grace of God, you made it. And for that, you ought to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. There may be one here today. So the ark of safety never accepted Christ. You ought to come. Maybe you already accepted Christ, but you need a good church home. We'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your extended family. If you're here today, we want to give you the opportunity to come. The door of the Lord's house is open. Is there one today who will come? This is your time. This is your hour. This is your moment. Come on. God is a good God and Put your hand together. worthy to be praised. Yeah. That one today. Doors open for you. Oh God, my, my. Is a good God, and He's worthy to be praised. God is a good God, and He's worthy to yes, be praised. God is a good God, and He's worthy to be praised. God is an awesome God. He's worthy God bless you. God bless you. God is an awesome God. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, God is an awesome God. Worthy to be praised. God is a good God.
Yes, he is. God bless you. God is a good God. You may be seated. And he is worthy to be praised. Look at your neighbor and say, God is good. That's right. That's right. Listen, we are so happy again. There's some things in the back for you. Also, the walkers, they have some, some eggs. Wave your hand. These are, these are real eggs. These ain't Kroger eggs. These, these eggs was up in the chicken. Or the hand, whatever it is. Anyway, you got some real eggs. Donations are welcome. They're going to be in the back. Donations are welcome. And um, we appreciate y'all doing that. Just Y'all know how much eggs cost. Amen. Hey, good news. Gerard is doing much better. And we're grateful to God. Give God praise. I got a text here. I am so grateful to God again for him. Amen and for what God is doing in and through his life. A couple of announcements and reminders. You want to wanna come on with the pages? You got the page? All right. Good morning, good morning. Um, if Chandler, Abriana, I saw her. Where's Bree? Come up. Elijah, come on. You already knew this. And Bree Asia. <laughs> Um, we have a little bit of a presentation. I was not supposed to take photos or videos inside the chamber. However, when I saw the people who did not look like me who were doing videos, I figured if they could do it, then so could I. Um, our senator wasn't as nice as some of the other ones. I really like Senator Donzella James out of Atlanta. She's a Democrat in Atlanta. She stopped our students as they were walking to like interact with them because there wasn't a lot of students that looked like them that were there. Um, there were large groups of students that did not look like them. However, um, she interacted with them a lot because she could relate and they looked like her. So next year I hope we'll have a whole van full because they were talking to me and then I looked around, I looked in my rearview mirror, all of them were asleep. I'm like, <laughs> so next, next year we're gonna have Mr. Briscoe driving, it's gonna be a van. So when you look at this, with this presentation, um, there's going to be some video that is going to be like, it's taken through the, yeah, I was doing it illegally. But I'm going to let them speak after you look at this video really quick. I'm sorry, not video, PowerPoint. It's not a video, sorry. The chairs 
always have I think that's the last one. So y'all, when they finished, they got a certificate, and in the envelope, the lady said, there's some compensation for y'all. So they were looking like, huh? She was like, oh, it's money in there. Y'all, I wish I could have video. Elijah took his money out. He put his money in his wallet, like, real quick. The girls kind of were like, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna keep mine in the envelope. But I'm glad they didn't know money was involved, because I, they did it because they wanted to do it and really enjoyed it. So they're gonna tell you about their experience and what they did on Thursday the 14th. Um, so we were there, um, we were serving, well, we gave messages to Senator Anderson. Uh, like my mom said, he wasn't very kind. <laughs> um, we would sit in these little chairs and we would move up and we would get messages to send in the room, I think. Was it? In the chamber, Senate the, chamber. The chamber. And then after that, we took our pictures with the senators and stuff. And there was this lady that stopped all of us, I think. And she greeted us. She asked us where we were from. We shook hands with a lot of people. And I think that's it. While we were there, uh, I saw some. <laughs> I told them they were going to do this. I got to get them used to public speaking. Yeah. Because it's the thing. You got to be able to get in front of people and have them speak. So. <laughs> so while we was there, I met this man, or I don't know what he would go by. So I had called him sir, and like, I felt so bad. And then... I had stopped him. I was like, "What are your pronouns?" Like, it's like, yeah. And he was like, "I don't even know." And then, like, he was like, "But thank you." Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And I had fun. My favorite part was walking through all the floors, seeing all the dead animals. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> But I had fun, and all of them had different personalities. Some of them were a bit snobbish, but yes. But I had fun. Most of them were very nice. OK, here you go. <laughs> um, so when we got greeted, we had to stand up and look them in the eyes and shake their hand, which was a little scary. But um, it was pretty fun there, so thank you. Thank you. At first, I thought it was gonna be um, boring when we got there, but it turned out fun because we got to move around and we just sit in one place. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, and they got a huge cafe with like every sign, every single drink. <laughs> Yeah, their, their favorite part was lunch. And they said, oh, we're done now. And I'm like, no, they're in recess, so we have to go back, and y'all are going to work some more. Um, 
So they told us that the day before they didn't get out until like five or six. And she said, oh, well, y'all are in Augusta. Y'all can go ahead and check out early. I said, well, y'all want to stay? Or go? We're going to go ahead and leave. I was like, really? But I think overall they, they, got, they had a really good experience. I was really glad that the senators who, you know, looked like them stopped them and interacted with them because theirs didn't as much. And I will say it was probably about 30 pages there, and it was maybe 15% that were African-American students. Um, I was talking to a lady who, she, she paid, she has a kid, her oldest kids. She was there with another, some, another group of kids. And I just think we miss the opportunity because we don't have the information. And I'm thankful that Reverend Perry went and did a devotion and opened up for them so that we now have the opportunity because now we're in, just like those other people are in, and we're going to have massive numbers next year as well. They're in, they convened 40 days um, starting, I think, January 7th or 8th to the end of March. So you can only do it once a year because after they found out you get paid for it, they want to come back. And it's a day out of school that doesn't count against you. You get this letter from the Georgia Senate, and it's not counted against you to miss school. So it's not an excused or unexcused absent. You're still counted as present because you're doing your civic duty with the Georgia State, Georgia State Legislator. So thank you all for your prayers and support as we went. And next year we will be doing a, again, and we're going to take a van so I can sleep just like they went to sleep. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, that, that's what's important. And as you say, you didn't see many people that look like us. And that's because we, we don't take advantage. And we don't have good people that will take their time to drive these young people. So I want to thank you, Sister Few, for doing that. Give her a big hand as well. I thank these young people again. I know y'all are a little nervous, but always, always, whenever you're talking, always lift your head and be proud of who you are. <clears throat> That'll open doors for you. Amen? So give them a big, big hand. That's right. Sanctuary Choir rehearsal will be this Thursday at 6 p.m. Sanctuary Choir this Thursday at 6 p.m. Dr. Marshall is coming. Good morning. So we've been telling you about the family day at the aquarium today. The ushers in the back. Uh, well, first of all, he sent out a link. Um, so if you want to do it via the link, you can do that. But the ushers in the back also has have a paper copy. Fill it out. Let us know your interest um, because we have a bus. Transportation will be provided for you. So all you'll have to do is pay for the ticket. But we need to know um, who is coming. And this is for everyone, whether you have children, whether you don't have children, whether you have grandchildren, or if you just want to go by yourself, you and your spouse, we're encouraging everyone to go. So it's like a 56 passenger bus and we want to fill it up so that we can go to the aquarium. If you've never been to the aquarium before, it's pretty cool, pretty awesome. I remember we went years ago when it first opened. And of course, there's a different appreciation for things when you're younger. But Dorenzo and I went when we were pregnant with Ava. We were like, oh my God, this is so cool. Look at the big old well. And like, it's amazing. And then going with your child and seeing the progression of that too, that's pretty cool as well. So anybody can go. Once the bus is full, the bus is full. But there were also some people who said that they wanted to drive. If you want to meet us there, that's fine. If you have family in the Atlanta area and they want to come with us, that's fine. We'll start the actual um, taking, we'll actually start taking the money, I'll say by the end of April, early May. So by the beginning of June, everything is paid for. You'll have your itinerary. Everything is in place and all we got to do is go. So um, again, the ushers have some. There's some in the back too, um, in front of the kids' um, doors. I put some in front of them in chairs so you can pick those up as well. He's going to send it back out on Remind if you want to do it via the link. And also, if you go back there, you'll see some com a computer um, in the middle of the two classrooms. Kids Check is coming very, very soon. More information will be disseminate, disseminated next week and the week after. So on first Sunday, you'll be able to check in your child. There's an app. You can do it in your car on the way to church. But we want to make sure that your children are secure. We want to make sure um, that you know where your child is we know where your child is and who they need to go to because it is 2024 and people are just weird and so we want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and making sure that your family is safe so more information on that is coming and um, we're excited we are thankful for your cooperation and I am turning it back over to you 
Give her a big hand. Thank you all. Good work. She sounded a little congested, so. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm too old to get sick now. But thank you, seriously. Um, the impact ministry and all. Now, we're able to do this. We haven't had a trip in a while. And um, so these kids thought um, that y'all wouldn't mind uh, helping them out. On the, you know, usually we charge them something for the, you know, make you pay a little something. This, don't, this might be the only one to, <laughs> to take his advantage of that. Um, but this is what tithing off is all about, that we might be able to help. These children will have jobs, so uh, whatever way we can help them, we want to try to do that, all right? And those of you who want to drive to the aquarium, that's fine. Um, if you want to meet them there, that's fine. So I'm excited about it. Amen. And I'll send that on the remind. And when she keeps saying him and he, she's talking about me, the pastor of the church, who happened to be her daddy. And she called me he and him. He going to send it to you. He going to put it on the remind. He, he, he. All right, y'all, let's go home. Let's go home. God bless. We're standing. We're standing. I love Mount Carmel. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And y'all doing a great work. A great work. Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to return to your portion of the blessings you've bestowed upon us. And now, God, we give back to you, uh, not grudgingly or of necessity, but give cheerfully because you love the cheerful giver. Bless now in Jesus' name. Dismiss us from this place, but never your presence. Amen. Amen. Meet us in the back.